Hello students, back to your English lecture. Song of the Open Road. It's a wonderful poem written by Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman is a very famous poet of USA. He was called as the father of free verses. Now why he was called father of free verses? Because once you see the poem, you'll come to know there is no rhyme, there is no rhythm to the poem. It is just written means even the first stanza is of three lines and the next other stanza is of four lines means there is no way okay whatever he thought he has done and that's why he's called and he started this and that's why walt whitman is called as father of free verses now in this poem uh, whitman separates his poem into four separate stanzas with the exception of the first stanza which contains only three lines the other stanzas contain four lines verses the poem utilizes free verse the lines are unrhymed and of varying lengths. Song of the Open Road is told from a first person point of view and the speaker, perhaps Whitman, knows himself very well. Now let's see the poem first. I'll read out the whole poem to you. Song of the Open Road Afoot and light-hearted, I take to the open road. Healthy, free, the world before me. The long brown path before me leading wherever I choose. Henceforth I ask not good fortune, I myself am good. Henceforth I whimper, no more postpone, no more need nothing. Done with indoor complaints, libraries, querulous criticisms, strong and content, I travel the open road. The earth that is sufficient, I do not want the constellations any nearer. I know they are very well where they are. I know they suffice for those who belong to them. Still here, I carry my old delicious burden. I carry them, men and women. I carry them with me wherever I go. I swear it is impossible for me to get rid of them. I am filled with them and I will fill, with, and I'll fill them in return. A lovely poem, Song of the Open Road. Now let's analyze stanza. The first stanza, afoot and light-hearted, I take to the open road. Healthy, free, the world before me, the long brown path before me, leading wherever I choose. Now here afoot means I'm walking. He's not using any kind of vehicle over here. Okay. So he is moving, walking on the road, very light-hearted. Light-hearted here means happy. And he is taking to the open road. Now look at the word used, open. And the road is open for him. No obstacles are there. The road will go where he wants. Okay. The road will go where he wants. Healthy, free, the world before me. So what kind of world is there in front of him? Healthy and free the long brown path before me leading wherever i choose this line says this brown path means another word for the road before me is leading wherever i choose this road is not going where the road wants to it goes where i want to go okay so very easy from this stanza the reader is able to glean several important points first the speaker is setting out on the open road on foot Secondly, he is light-hearted and open to all, is about to experience. Means he wants to experience whatever he wants to without knowing anything. Additionally, the speaker recognizes that he is who is in control of his journey. Means no one else is controlling his journey. He is the one, the driver of his own journey. He will choose where the path will take him on his journey. So, means the same thing. The road will decide. The road will not decide where he will go. He will decide where the road goes. Let's go to the next stanza. Henceforth I ask not good fortune. I myself am good fortune. Henceforth I whimper no more. Postpone no more. Need nothing. Done with indoor complaints, libraries, querulous criticism. Strong and content. I travel the open road. 
Now here in this stanza, the speaker or the poet is telling, I'm not asking for any good fortune. Okay. I'm not asking for any good fortune or what you say, good luck. I myself am good fortune. He says that I am my own good luck. Okay. I will make luck good for me. See the use of the words good fortune is used twice. Henceforth is also used twice. Okay. Henceforth I whimper no more, postpone no more, need nothing. He is telling that I will not complain. Okay. See whimper means some painful sound. Whimper means painful sound. Postpone no more. No ideas means what I want to do I will do it today itself. Nothing I will postpone. And I need nothing now. Okay, what I want is only freedom. Done with indoor complaints, libraries, querulous criticism. Now here, querulous means complaining. And all the complaints, indoor complaints, friends, in the house, outside the house, around the, around the society. Means the whole library is built of complaint. Okay, he is least bothered. From the picture also you could make it out. See how people are criticizing and he is least bothered. Okay, the picture clarifies that he is least bothered about any kinds of complaints and criticism. How he stands? He stands strong and content. Content means I am happy with whatever I am having. That means satisfied. Okay, he is standing strong and satisfied and he is ready to travel the open road. He also says he is no longer, means he don't want to be in the wall inside. He's strong and happy to be on the open road. And the line sixth, querulous criticism, the use of alliteration here emphasizes the speaker's carefree tone, which is continued throughout the course of song of open road. The next stanza. The earth that is sufficient, I do not want the constellations any nearer. I know they are very well where they are. I know they suffice for those who belong to them. Now here the poet says, the earth that is sufficient. Now for me, whatever I am having is sufficient. Here the earth means whatever he is having. Okay, It doesn't mean the whole earth. He is symbolizing. A metaphor is used over here. That he, whatever he is having, it is compared to earth. I do not want the constellations anymore. Now, what do you mean by constellations? The group of stars. Okay. There are so many constellations in the galaxy. And here, with reference to here, constellations, actually constellation means stars. But in the poem, it refers to some important person, famous people, a group of famous people. Okay. So, he doesn't want those famous people around him. Okay, he says, I am happy with myself. I don't need this famous people around me. I know they are very well where they are. They should be, means those famous people should be where they are. They should not be near me. I know they suffice for those who belong to them. Suffice means enough. Means these famous people, okay, these famous people are more than enough for whom they require. But I don't require these famous people. Getting it? Now, in the last line is strong contrast to the rest of the poem. Where the speaker emphasizes his free will and independence, which means he probably does not include himself in the group of people who belong to the constellations. He does not belong to them because he does not need them. Okay, he don't want to be a part of the famous people, the group of famous people. He wants to be his own as live the life as an individual. Let's see the next answer. Still here, I carry my old delicious burdens. I carry them, men and women. I carry them with me wherever I go. I swear it is impossible for me to get rid of them. I filled with them and I will fill them in return. Now here, see every picture on every slide is complementing to the content what is written over there. Okay. So now here you could see that the man is carrying the burden on his back. So what kind of burden is there? The poet refers to it as delicious burden. 
of such a contrast idea how can a burden be delicious but definitely a person okay how much ever you say that i am free and free from my past it can never happen your past will always follow you and that is a burden okay now sometimes the burden can be of happy memories it can also be of sad memories okay now in the stanza a unique feature is there that the whole stanza is within the bracket parenthesis can you see the uh, brackets over there in the first line and the last line okay it is in the brackets now when it is in the bracket it is telling that something is there within me and i am always going to carry them that bracket symbolizes about his inner thoughts though he started walking on the open road for freedom but there is something inside which he can't leave see he says i'll carry them men and women i'll carry them with me wherever i go wherever i go on this road but that burden that old delicious burden that here he wants to remind us about the good memories he is having about the people in his mind and he will take them wherever he goes i swear i swear it is impossible for me to get rid of them and this burden or these memories i can't forget i can't forget so wherever i'll go i'll take this burden along with me i am filled with my burden and i'll fill them in return the last line says that that i'll fill my burden my burden will grow bigger and bigger okay he wants to say that the my burden will grow bigger and bigger okay i am filled with them and i'll fill my burden so it's a very important very emotional related to a person's freedom this poem is now uh the speaker declares that he cannot uh, get rid himself of the burden instead he and his burden share a symbiotic relationship of sort he is filled with his burdens and in return he fills them the speaker is stating here that his burdens do not define him rather he accepts them and carries them with him wherever he goes means very willingly he is taking that burden okay though the word burden is used okay but very willingly he is carrying that burden wherever he wants to go here the poem ends let's uh, see a short summary of the poem the speaker of the poem is describing a trip on which he is embarking means the poet is starting a trip a road trip walking he describes himself as being healthy and free he says i'm very healthy and i'm very free because i'm free from all the odds and he realizes he is the only person who is in complete control of his life means now no one is there who will take charge of his life i will take my own decisions so he is the controlling factor he chooses his own destiny means whatever happens good or bad it is his choice because of this realization he does not have to wish or hope or pray for good fortune means continuously we pray for god please give me this please give me that he is not praying he said whatever action i'll do and i will get the result i am responsible for the result so i will not ask for the good fortune i myself is the good fortune he attests that he himself is his good fortune and that is all he needs there is nothing that he is lacking he is having everything he is confident he is healthy he can think okay so he again says he will reach his destination on his own and the earth will provide him with anything extra that is necessary he says whatever he is have is whatever he is having he is happy with that his destination is on his own means wherever the point where he wants to reach he will go on his all alone he don't want this ideas from different people okay this is not to say that the road he is taking is not paved with imperfections and burdens means he says that this road which he has chosen road actually is a symbol used over here for an life independent life here road means life okay so he says that this road is not the perfect one there are burdens there may be problems in the life but i will face it rather than worry however the speaker has decided to take those burdens with him and deal with them as they arise 
whatever problem comes he will be happily facing all the problems you can't get away from it see freedom actually the whole poem is about freedom individualism and away from criticism but then to hear the speaker is telling means first two stanzas he says talks about freedom but then we can't move away from our past okay though we say a lot that burden of the past is always with us so try to accept it and move ahead don't think them their burden so that's the reason why he used the word delicious the highlight of the poem or the st- or the line which will be generally asked in exams is explain the sentence delicious burden the meaning of it is some happy memories of the past i hope this poem you must have understood if any doubts will definitely meet in the zoom lecture thank you students